Welcome to MWC Insider Series. I'm Sue Merrick, and today I'm speaking with Phil Claudi, Principal Product Manager at F5. Thank you for joining me today, Phil. Well, thank you for having me. It's really nice to meet you and be with you. So first of all, can you talk a little bit about F5's shift to cloud native solutions and what that means for the company? Yeah, I think um, I I think you know it's really um, we we have some cloud native stuff right now, right? The F five has been transitioning to software in general. Like we first got over fifty percent software sales this last year, uh, so we've been transitioning uh, out of just being a hardware player to software, and we have made moves into cloud native, uh, but more on the enterprise side. Um, so, you know, we acquired Nginx and stuff, and, and that's useful also at service providers, but mostly for IT type use cases. And so this is really about the transition to cloud native uh, for the core, for networking. Um, and for that, we really wanted to bring uh, some of the technology from our big IP product in. And the big IP product, um, you know, it's it's it was not originally built to be cloud native, right? And so... Um, it was nice because we actually were in the middle of a project to uh, break apart the big IP product so that it could be packaged in different ways. And at the same time that we had just acquired Nginx, and I was able to sort of, we were able to sort of take these pieces and put together something that was cloud native, like from the ground up. And I think it's really surprised people. Like I was at the telco day at um, uh, KubeCon this last year, and I was talking about this stuff. And people were like, wait, I, th I thought F5 just did devices, just did hardware. Um, so it's it's a big transition for us. And the other thing is, is that the, the work I'm doing is very particular to this Kubernetes uh, infrastructure. Um, but the platform allows us to take our big IP technology and launch it in new cloud native ways uh, for a lot more solutions. And that's, I think, one of the other exciting bits about this. And how does that shift then impact service providers? Well, so service providers are, you know, are taking a giant leap, like as they do every time they go to a new G. And the thing is, is that they decided they wanted to go cloud native. The, the standards started talking about cloud native. People were talking cloud native before it was clear what the tools were to go cloud native. And, and now it's very well settled that like if you're going to go cloud native, you're going to go cloud native with Kubernetes and in the sort of the patterns that Kubernetes gives you in that, that, that world. The problem is that Kubernetes didn't come of age for telco use. It really was, um, it came of age for enterprise and web use. Mm -hmm. And so in some ways it's not actually fit for purpose. And so, you know, there needs to be some kind of an adjustment at the infrastructure level um, to make Kubernetes uh, work properly for the service providers. Now you're announcing a deal with Verizon at Mobile World Congress. Can you talk about F5's collaboration with Verizon and why the operator selected F5? Yeah, I, well, I mean, part of the reason why I selected F5 is because the part we're playing is this sort of ingress, egress, the path in and out of Kubernetes. And honestly, if you're doing anything that looks like application delivery or load balancing, you're going to at least talk to F5. Um, but I think, you know, uh, Verizon had a really clear um, vision and they realized that there were going to be gaps, right? They realized that as an early adopter, um, there were going to be gaps in how Kubernetes worked. And they actually analyzed some of those gaps pretty darn well. And so when we met, we were talking the same language. Often, you know, if you're really early, you're talking to people who haven't really thought through what the problems are, uh, Verizon had. And so that made us great uh, partners along the way. And we were able to give them sort of our existing technology with um, some cloud native controls, I should say some Kubernetes controls, um, to, to get them started in their lab process and then work with them on what our final product would look like. And so they were just they were just great. They really understood some of the problems up front. And can you talk a little bit about why they selected F5 or you know, do you know anything about who else they were looking at and why F5 stood out? Well, again, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I, I don't think I can talk about who else they were looking at, uh, I, except broadly. So I think they were looking at several, um, you know, commercial uh, things and open source things, and just putting it on their vendors to deliver stuff. Um, I would say um, 
one of the problems is, is that nobody really had something that covered all of the gaps uh, for using Kubernetes for telco, right? Um, sort of broadly, uh, Kubernetes was designed to hide networking uh, to make it easy for app developers. The problem is when your apps are networking, um, that doesn't really work. And so the, the sort of whole networking layer undergirding uh, Kubernetes just kind of didn't work. And so you could get kind of part solutions that were, again, designed more for enterprise or, or, or uh, um, uh, you know, web type use cases that were load balancer, which meant something very, very specific, um, or ingress, which again, I mean, just HTTP. Um, and so there were some real limitations um, in the way it worked. And none of that technology, one of two things, either they had big components that were outside the cluster, which was one of the things that Verizon didn't want, right? They didn't want to have major components that needed to be coordinated outside of the cluster. They wanted everything orchestrated within Kubernetes. Or they were so inside of Kubernetes that they ignored the rest of the world, right? And, and service providers, they've got extremely complex networks that you're dropping these clusters into, and they need to interact with the rest of the world. They need to to um, to play nice uh, with all of the different VLANs and VRFs and firewalls and routing infrastructure and everything else. And so they either had a choice of something that was external that required a ton of coordination of um, uh, configuration between what was outside, what was inside, and had sort of a limited ability to work with Kubernetes or something that was internal, but, but just kind of ignored the, the outside world too much or real hacks where you just kind of let everybody just do whatever they want and create their own networking solutions. Um, and then you have no control over how you are going to secure it, how you're going to you know, route it, how you're going to do your IP engineering, all of that kind of stuff. And I think you may have kind of answered my next question, but I was specifically going to talk about um, your platform approach, which you kind of talked about, but it's big IP next service proxy for Kubernetes, which is kind of a mouthful. I think you say big IP next SPK um, is yeah. your abbreviation and then Aspen service mesh. Now, can we talk about how that delivers Kubernetes for telcos differently than other platforms? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, so the big IP part, right. Um, big IP next was part of this process of sort of breaking big IP apart so that we could deliver it in different ways. And so that's what we were able to package together to make a cloud native big IP product. And so we were able to bring in the sort of data plane stuff from our legacy products in terms of protocols and routing and all of the rest of those things um, to play nice with the broader network and to play nice with the standards um, and make it cloud native. And then the service proxy really handles um, all of that traffic back and forth inside the cluster. Right. So the, the, the sorry, the service proxy handles the traffic in and out. The, the service mesh handles the traffic back and forth. And the thing that uh, Verizon really liked about it was that it gave them a control point right at the application, right at the network function. And so, you know, like being able to get visibility into the signaling um, was a huge part of why they selected Aspen Mesh, uh, because Aspen Mesh is built on open source Istio, right? But but it's got additions onto it, and it's got um, and it's supported. Um, so uh, so I think they really liked the combination of the service proxy, which gave them a connection to the outside world, and that was able to do that north south, that ingress egress. And the surface mesh that connected things uh, sideways and gave them control right at the pod. Now, I, if I understood right, too, it sounds like you, you think it's important to build for functionality that's going to come in the future. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So, um, so one thing is that the progress to a 5G, particularly standalone 5G, um, it goes in stages. Like there's a first stage where people just want to get something going. They want to get certain network functions. They're really focused just on the 5G interfaces. And even then they're willing to just kind of hack around any problems they hit. 
Um, they're not as worried about scale. They're not as worried about security. They're not, you know, they're they're just trying to get the darn thing done, right? And and then there's sort of the stage where they're doing it a little bit more broadly, and they need to have they need to start thinking about all of the network functions, not just the big name AMF, SMF, right? Um, and they start having interfaces to 4G functions and legacy stuff. And they start they start looking at a broader picture. And then they start doing it really at scale. And you need performance and all the rest of this. Um, and one of the th other sort of parallel things that's happening is there are some standards happening inside of Kubernetes around how to um, how to evolve this this ingress egress this 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 path problem uh, for Kubernetes. And so I think that we're going to, we are going to be working in with the Gateway API uh, group within the CNCF um, to try and evolve that so that it will help cover these gaps that the telcos have, so that there will be a standard way inside of Kubernetes um, to solve the problems and to track along with the customers as they're going to the next stage and the next stage and the next stage with their, with their 5G rollout. So a lot of it is evolving with the operator, figuring yes. out where they're going to evolve. Yeah, maybe before they even know for sure yeah. how that well, <laughs> how that evolution is going to happen. And the thing is, n n nobody's really done a lot of this stuff. Like Ver Verizon are some of the first people to connect some of these network functions from different vendors with each other to do what they're doing, um, and so they're solving a whole lot of problems up front. Uh, as a, as an early adopter, um, and so you know, you you just find interesting problems every single day. Sounds really exciting. Well, thank you, Phil, for joining me today. It was great talking with you. Thank you very much. It was nice to meet you, Sue.